In this video, we're going to extend our knowledge on similar triangle proofs. And what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at the corresponding parts of similar triangles. So if you recall, similar triangles have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. So if you look at this first example, it says if the triangles are similar, what conclusions can we draw about the sides and the angles? Well, we can say that the, the corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding angles are congruent. So if we look at this picture, or if you imagine um, looking at this statement here, A, B, and X, Y correspond. So let's go ahead and just kind of sketch a picture. So I have A, B, C, and then X, Y is in the same position as B, and then Z. So we know that the sides have to be proportional, so that means AB to XY is in the same ratio as BC to YZ, which is in the same ratio as AC to XZ. So the corresponding sides are all proportional, so that's one conclusion you can make. And you can also say that the corresponding angles are congruent. So I can say angle A is congruent to angle X. I could say angle B is congruent to angle Y. And then lastly, angle C and angle Z. And again, you could just look at the order here of your letters, making sure you match up the correct um, letters so that you're looking at the correct corresponding parts. So if you have two similar triangles, all sides are proportional, all corresponding angles are congruent. So looking at this proof, what's different about this is instead of trying to prove that the triangles are similar, you're trying to prove this proportion. So what that means is this proportion has to come from similar triangles. So we need to first prove similar triangles. So this is kind of like the CPCTC for similar triangles, except for CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's not the case here because it's only the angles that are congruent for similar triangles and the sides are proportional. So if you ever see that you're trying to prove a proportion, that indicates you have to first prove that the triangles are similar. So let's look at what's given here and then go from there with what proportions we're going to, or what triangles we're trying to prove are similar. So we have angle ACB. ACB is a right angle. And we have CD is perpendicular to AB. So basically I have a large right triangle and two smaller right triangles. So there's really two different types of proofs you could do. You could prove that this small triangle is similar to the large triangle. This small triangle is similar to the big triangle. So what we need to do is we need to look at our proportion and figure out, well, which way are we trying to go? So we're trying to prove that AD is in the same ratio, or so AD to DC, we're trying to prove that that's in the same ratio as AC to CB. So just by highlighting that, I can see which two triangles. I can see this yellow triangle, and I can see this blue triangle are the two triangles I'm trying to work with because I don't have enough information for that triangle um, CBD. So what that means is I'm going to redraw these triangles like what we did when we did our angle-angle proof. So I have um, A, D, and C. And then if we look at the yellow triangle, so our right angle in the yellow triangle is at C. A is going to be in the same position as this A. Those match up. Those are our shared angles. And then B is up top here. So we need to prove those two triangles are similar. So that's where we're going to start. So let's go ahead and write down our givens. So we have ACB is a right angle. It's 
so that's given. We have CD is perpendicular to AB. And right away, that perpendicular led us to say that angle um, CDA is a right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. So CDA is a right angle. And that's because perpendicular lines imply right angles or perpendicular lines form right angles. And then from there, I can go ahead and say that those two angles, so angle ACB and angle ADC um, or CDA, I can say that those are congruent now. So angle ACB is congruent to angle CDA because all right angles are congruent. And again, the reason why I'm trying to get these angles is because in order to prove that the triangles are similar, I can use angle-angle similarity. So this is going to give me, so if we're thinking about angle-angle similarity, this gives me one of my angles right here. So now I need another angle, which we always look for that shared angle when we're dealing with triangles that are overlapped. So in this case, angle A was our shared angle. So I can say angle A is congruent to angle A by reflexive property. So there is my other angle. And then this is enough information to pull these together and say that the two triangles are similar. So I can say triangle AD, so my blue triangle there, so ADC is similar to triangle A, C, I think it's B. So making sure my letters are matching up, the corresponding letters. This is by angle, angle similarity. So there's the old part of this, just proving that the triangles are similar. So then the new part comes into play when we need to say that the corresponding sides are proportional. Well, we know that since these triangles were created looking at these sides, we already have taken a look at the proportional sides or the corresponding sides that would be proportional. So since the triangles are similar, we can say that their corresponding sides are um, proportional to each other. So I have AD to DC is in the same ratio as AC to CB. So I can go ahead and write that. So AD over BC is equal to AC to CB. And the reason for this is our new reason that corresponding sides of Similar triangles are proportional. And you might see this as corresponding sides, similar triangles, proportional. So you might see it like that, CSSTP. Um, but you can always write it out. You could also say similar triangles implies proportional corresponding sides. Something like that. Something along the lines of, you know that the triangles are similar, therefore their sides have to be proportional. The corresponding sides have to be proportional. So there's the first part. Now I haven't even talked about the last part, but if you look at what happened here, if you match this, that's really this diagonal right here. And if you look at this product, that's really this diagonal. So really what we did um, was to get from part A to part B is you just cross multiply. So sometimes you might not even have to prove part A. It might ask you to go directly to the product of two sides equaling the product of two other sides. And that just means you have to kind of work backwards. So you look at um, this as being one diagonal of your proportion, this as being the other diagonal of your proportion. 
And, you know, from there, you would get, you prove your proportional sides by proving your similar triangles first. So if you ever see something like this, it means get the proportion first, and then your reason for it is just cross multiply. So the last step is probably the easiest step because you're literally going to take these and you're just going to cross multiply. So it's going to be AD times CB equals DC times AC. So that's the last piece I'm trying to prove, and my reason from that, for that is just cross multiply or cross multiplication. So that's it. So this is as far as you can go with the similar triangle proof. So you're going to um, sometimes end at the proportion. Sometimes you might have to go further and do the cross multiplication. So just be aware of that. Or sometimes you might just be proving that the triangles are similar. So wherever you end up, this is the process you have to follow. You have to prove that the triangles are similar first then set up your proportions because of the corresponding sides being proportional, then you can cross multiply. So we'll talk a little bit more about this um, in class. And for now, get some key ideas down and go ahead and try the check your understanding problems.